Well, good morning. Dr. Sil here. I'm a junior doctor from uh, Australia and I'm in training to become a psychiatrist. And today's video is all about antipsychotics and their side effects. I've done a big video on uh, how I conceptualize and understand the neurobiology, what's happening in the brain when it comes to psychosis um, and schizophrenia and all that kind of stuff. And then I did another big video about uh, the medications, all the options, the first, the second, the third generations, clozapine, uh, and we spoke about the mechanisms of actions and, and we spoke, spoke about all the meds, but we didn't talk too much about side effects. So this video is, to all, is all about the side effects um, because it's really the side effects of the um, medications which kind of help you decide which ones to take or which ones not to take and unfortunately side effects are pretty common and often when you treat uh, psychosis is that the cost of certain side effects so it's a it's kind of uh, you know often I'll talk to patients about what side effects are they willing to accept uh, because you have to have a level of acceptance sometimes there are plenty of people who have no side effects with antipsychotics and have effective treatment of their mental illness. So please by no means think that just because you're going to be on antipsychotic that you'll 100% get side effects. But it's good to know about the different side effects that could occur so that you can talk to your doctor or your loved one or, you know, uh, so that you can be better informed to make better decisions. We often talk about compliance with medications, the percentage of people who actually take the medications as prescribed. And antipsychotics have one of the poorest compliance because uh, people get side effects, they don't tell their doctor, they just stop taking it, they become unwell. And so we have to kind of figure out a, a solution to this. So it's really important that if you want to ch stop, change, reduce, increase dose, whatever it is you need to work with your doctor, let them know you won't get in trouble, um, but you need to work with them. All right, now before we get into it, I'll just describe the structure. I'll talk about um, all the effects that uh, uh, the medications have and the different receptors that they hit uh, and why you get the different side effects. I'll talk a bit about the neurobiology. Um, and uh, then I'll kind of show you a table about uh, all the different medication, well, a lot of the different antipsychotics that are available and their different kind of side effect profiles. So let's begin. So I guess the first thing to say about um, medications and side effects is that there's really no such thing as a side effect. We've just used that word to describe the effects of a medication. So there's just effects. Uh, and antipsychotic medications uh, block lots of different receptors. They block dopamine receptors, lots of different serotonin receptors, histamine, um, uh, adrenaline receptors, the noradrenergic receptors. They block acetylcholine receptors, but those are the really important ones for side effects. So let's talk about what blocking these different receptors can cause as side effects slash effects. So let's start with dopamine. So I guess the first side effect to describe when you block dopamine is uh, uh, essentially the effect of the medications, which is blocking dopamine receptors reduces uh, psychotic symptoms. As you might remember, there's a mesolimbic circuit that starts deep in the brain, the brainstem called the ventral tegmental area, and the neurons spike up to the ventral striatum, a part of the basal ganglia. And uh, in that area is the nucleus accumbens, which when it's hyperactive is associated with the positive symptoms of psychosis, the hallucinations, the delusions, the agitation, the disordered behavior. And when you block the D2 dopamine receptors, it turns down the dial on that circuit, reducing the symptoms and sometimes completely treating the symptoms. But anyway, I talk a lot more about that in my previous video on, the, on, on antipsychotics. This is more about the side effects. So these are the effects we don't want. So, so it's important to know that there's actually other dopamine circuits in the brain and the medications don't choose where they go. They go all across the brain. They can't just pick the mesolimbic circuit. So yes, they block other circuits. So for example, there's a tubero infundibular circuit that starts in the hypothalamus, goes down to the posterior pituitary. And when it's got plenty of D2 uh, receptors on it and dopaminergic neurons. And when you block the dopamine there, you can get what's called prolactinemia high levels of prolactin in the blood. When you have high levels of prolactin in the blood, you can get a set of side effects around sexual dysfunction. There can be problems in libido, in um, performance, like erectile dysfunction, uh, and problems in ejaculation and, and orgasmia, so a lack of ability to orgasm. So when prolactin level is high, that can be a problem. Guess what? There's a way to find out if your prolactin level is high, and that's a blood test. And if it is high, there are things you can do. You can, for example, there's lots of things you can do, but one of the examples is you can add um, a, a partial uh, dopamine agonist, uh, which will uh, which reduces prolactin levels. 
Um, other problems with prolactin include uh, osteoporosis if it's for decades, like long term, and um, you can also get gynecomastia problems with your periods, so amenorrhea, lack of period, um, and you can also get lactation, like uh, because prolactin is the hormone that is released uh, to start milk production and letdown. Now, where else is there dopamine in the brain that, if blocked, would cause side effects? Well, there's other circuits. So there's the nigrostriatal circuit. Um, this is a very important circuit uh, uh, in movement. So this is the extrapyramidal, um, you know, motor system. And uh, essentially, when you block the dopamine receptors in this circuit, which starts in the uh, pars compactor of the substantia nigra deep in the brainstem and goes up to the uh, striatum of the basal ganglia, when you block the um, receptors here, you get movement side effects. So as I'm talking to you and, and holding this iPad, uh, it's smooth movement, but to make it a smooth movement, there is uh, a lot of input from the basal ganglia making it a smooth movement, inhibiting and um, triggering the movement so that it's smooth and purposeful. But when you block the, the D2 receptors in that nigrostriatal uh, circuit that affects the basal ganglia, then you might get um, problems in the smoothness of your movement. And you get what's called the extrapyramidal side effects. Yeah, so for example, the dystonia when people get very tight. Um, so when you're blocking the uh, dopamine, and the issue here where you're blocking the dopamine is essentially a balance between the dopamine and the acetylcholine in the basal ganglia. So when you're blocking the dopamine and there's this imbalance, you get ten you can get really tense muscles. You can also get tardive dyskinesia, uh, and, and you can get akthesia, the, the need the restlessness. Tardive dyskinesia, by the way, is like involuntary mouth movements, and akathesia is the inner restlessness you get when you need to move. And with all these three, if you give something called like benztropine, an anticholinergic, it lowers the acetylcholine in the basal ganglia, and it rebalances the proportion between dopamine and acetylcholine, and it, and, uh, and, and it can make things feel less stiff with dystonia. And it's really remarkable when you see someone who's really stiff and, and they, they just relax, you know, very quickly after trying benztropine. Now, it's a, it's a medication you've got to be careful with. You don't want to take it long term. It's an anticholinergic, so you get dry eyes, dry mouth, problems with weeing, problems with pooing. So if you have too much of it, so it's, it's a medicine that you need to be cautious with and the doctors will will decide if it's appropriate. With the akathisia, that inner restlessness that happens, um, we actually don't give benztropine often. It's, it's usually like a, a beta blocker, like propanolol or atenolol. Uh, and uh, you can also add a, well, the doctors can decide if there's a, a muscle relaxant kind of medication, like a benzodiazepine that might be appropriate. Um, and tardive dyskinesia, I'm just going to say it's a really hard side effect to treat. It's very rare. And um, the treatment is a whole video in itself. So I won't go into too much detail here. Now, those are the issues in the basal ganglia when there's uh, like a lot of extra movement, but also blocking the dopamine receptors in the uh, nigrostriatal circuit uh, can cause decreased movements. Things like a drug-induced Parkinsonism, where people get, you know, a flat kind of expressionless face. Uh, their, their movements are slower. Their coordination is poorer. They have a shuffling gait. It's hard to initiate. They have the cogwheeling rigidity. Uh, and the treatment for this is also complex. Um, uh, so I won't go into too much detail, but that, that's also, you, you get that side effect because of the issues in the basal ganglia dopamine blocking. All right, that's the dopamine blocking. Let's talk about the histamine blocking. Yes, that's right. Uh, antipsychotics are also blocking histamine receptors. They're antihistaminergic. And the side effects here are very common, unfortunately, and that's really related to sedation and weight gain. So it's uh, not very well known, but histamine, high levels of histamine are very important in your circadian rhythm and making you feel awake. When you are awake and doing activities, you have high levels of histamine, and when you're sleeping, your histamine drops. So when you block histamine with an antihistamine, it makes you feel sedated. It also makes you feel hungry. It makes you feel really hungry. And when you're sedated um, and you have dop dopamine and noradrenaline blockade, you don't have the prefrontal cortex strength to inhibit yourself from eating. So people often overeat when they're on antipsychotics and get weight gain. Now, there are management options here. There are, um, you know, lifestyle modifications that can be done. And there's also medications that are available to reduce um, weight gain. There's this uh, relatively new drug called Ozempic, a GLP-1 uh, agonist, I believe, or blocker. Uh, anyway, whatever it does to JLP1, it, uh, I'll look into it later, it um, reduces uh, weight gain. And, and I'm pretty sure in like five or ten years, everyone's going to be on it. Because us humans love to eat. 
anyway, buy shares in it now. That's my uh, non-financial advice. But yeah, those are the side effects associated with blocking histamine, the sedation, the weight gain. Uh, sedation's also got uh, noradrenaline and acetylcholine blockade related to it. Now, let's talk about the acetylcholine blockade. The antipsychotics often can block acetylcholine receptors and that can cause anticholinergic symptoms. This is like a dry mouth, a dry eyes, uh, sometimes constipation, abdominal pain. Um, if you are constipated on antipsychotics, you must, must, must tell your doctor. Uh, it's, it, you know, it can be very dangerous if you do not manage it. And it's very easy to manage as long as you manage it uh, and you get ahead of it. Uh, so constipation management, I've done a lot of it. <laughs> I did my aged care term and there was a lot of um, you know, older people with constipation and, and I had to get the skills for it. So that's been really useful going into psychiatry with those skills because constipation can be common with these medications. So make sure that you um, talk to your doctor if you're feeling constipated. Now with the noradrenaline blockade, so um, like an alpha-1 receptor blocking action of some of the antipsychotics, uh, I guess noradrenaline is the adrenaline of the brain and uh, your brain can control your blood pressure uh, through complex mechanisms. But but when you when you uh, block the noradrenaline receptors, the alpha one noradrenaline receptor in the brain, it can um, affect your ability to control the blood pressure of your body. So there is a common phenomenon of orthostatic hypotension, where essentially um, orthostatic. So if you're sitting or standing, you're, you, you know it's, it's about your position or your posture. Uh, sometimes it's called postural blood pressure drops. Um, uh, so. Uh, what we do is we lie people down, we do a blood pressure, then we stand them up, stand them up for a couple of minutes, and then do another blood pressure and compare the difference. Um, so if you're getting lightheaded on standing, that means that your body is not uh, increasing your blood pressure quick enough, uh, and and so there's not enough blood getting to your brain, and so you're getting a lightheaded feeling. Uh, if this is extreme and there's not enough blood going to your brain, you may faint, and then as you faint, you'll wake up quite quickly because the blood rushes back to your brain as you lie flat. Uh, it's important if you're getting lightheaded um, uh, to tell your doctor, number one, to get up very slowly. So take a couple minutes, sit, sit for a second. If, you're, if, you've, if you've been sleeping, then you wake up, just sit for a couple of seconds, drink a bit of water. You need to drink a lot of water, actually, um, to keep your blood pressure uh, plump uh, and full and, uh, and get up slowly. And um, if you have fainted, you need to let your doctor know about that because uh, if you're fainting regularly, you might need to change medications. But some people just need to increase their salt and drink more water and they're fine. So that's um, the common side effects. I guess other, uh, other interesting side effects to remember is you probably get, you've probably had a couple of ECGs if you've been having antipsychotics or if you're caring for someone on antipsychotics, they probably had some ECGs. Um, uh, that's to monitor your, your heart, uh, electrical conductivity, uh, you know, health. And, and there is a thing called QT prolongation because uh, antipsychotics for some reason bind to a receptor called the HER-G potassium receptor, which is important in the repolarization of my myocytes, the cells in the heart, so that they repolarize. And if they repolarize too slowly, so there's QT prolongation, uh, it can cause problems. So we monitor it uh, and um, different antipsychotics might have a different a QT prolong, prolonging risk. And we call it QT prolongation just because it's the time between the Q wave uh, and the T wave of the heart, which is the squiggles you see on the ECG and the, the timing between them. Now, the final unique um, side effects to talk about are the side effects of clozapine, which I talk about in depth in my clozapine video. Um, but there's agranulocytosis and, and uh, myocarditis. And these are from unknown mechanisms and they occur to less than 1% of people on clozapine, so do not stress. Um, that's just why you're getting such intense monitoring, um, the agranulocytosis. But basically what it means is that um, there's a certain type of white blood cell, especially the neutrophil, which is a granulocyte, um, which is an important um, immune system cell that attacks uh, infection, especially bacterial infections. And it's very important, you want neutrophils, but uh, some, less than 1% of people, so very rare, but sometimes in some people, due to a weird genetic um, slash environmental combination, they, they, they lose their neutrophils, the clozapine kills the neutrophils. Um, and it doesn't happen in a minute, you know, it takes, you know, days and days. So, so we usually pick up on it on blood tests and often we'll pick up on it before a patient even is, is aware of it. Uh, so there's just pretty intense monitoring for that. And the myocarditis uh, is essentially inflammation of the heart, and that's also very rare. And we do blood tests for that, uh, like troponins. Um, and if needed, we do uh, echocardiograms. So we, we do imaging of the heart as well for people on clozapine. Now look, 
that's a pretty good overview of the common side effects of antipsychotics. If you have questions about the, them and their mechanism, leave them in the comments below. I love uh, talking about this kind of stuff. All right, let's have a look at the college guidelines, which is freely available on the internet. Um, uh, and the college guidelines are around antipsychotics. Um, it's a long read, but it's an important one, especially if you're working in the field. Uh, but if you're interested in the field, uh, at least skim through it. There's a couple, like, you know, there's like maybe five very important pages on it with very important tables. This is one of them. Uh, you don't have to read every single paper, page of it. Um, I did, but you don't. But yeah, have a look at this uh, table. It's um, a kind of a relative frequency of common side effects in antipsychotics, which we've spoken about. So across the top of the table, we can see the different uh, side effects. So we see the um, anticholinergic side effects, the 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 um, metabol like the weight gain side effects, dyslipidemia, um, the sedations over here. We talked about the orthostatic hypertension, the prolactin, um, the hyperglycemia. I, I group into the weight gain uh, metabolic syndrome side effects. We talked about the EPSEs as well. Our weight gains its own column here, and we also talked about QTC prolongation. So that's what we've already spoken about. Um, and uh, and then we can see a list here uh, of lots of the common antipsychotics. So uh, in the top half, we have the the more recent second generation antipsychotics. Um, uh, if you're on an antipsychotic or you know someone on an antipsychotic, can you see it here? So we can see um, a couple of things that are pretty striking. So clozapine, which is uh, unanimously agreed as the most effective antipsychotic, um, also has some significant, uh, very substantial side effects. So very high anticholinergic burden, um, problems with weight gain and, and metabolic syndrome and sedation. Um, it, it has the uh, orthostatic hypotension. Um, and, uh, and essentially, you know, it just means that you need to do more monitoring with it, but it's worth it for so many people because it increases the chance of getting a recovery from the debilitating psychotic symptoms they might feel. But I just want to give you a brief overview of this table, have a look, see, um, if there's the medication you're on, see if there's another medication that might be better for you. Often they talk about um, Abilify is a good uh, medication which has low side effects. So if you look at Abilify, not much anticholinergic side effects. Very, you know, there are, it's not associated with weight gain or problems in dyslipidemia. Some people get a bit of uh, lightheadedness and postural hypertension. Some people might get some mild um, uh, extrapyramidal symptoms, but um, overall, it's, it, in terms of side effects, it's a really, really good drug. Um, there's other compounds like brexpiprazole, which is similar to uh, Abilify, also known as aripiprazole, uh, and that even has less side effects, so the company says. I haven't actually read the primary literature myself. But another interesting observation I'm just making now is um, obviously that the first generations have much more uh, kind of motor side effects than the second generation, but also that the um, kind of second generation has a lot more problems with dyslipidemia, weight gain, hyperglycemia than the first generation does. And also that the first generation is more commonly associated with um, prolactin than the than the um, uh, second generation. But yeah, have a look, have a play. Let me know if you have any questions about it. Happy to answer questions in the comments down below. And uh, I better get to work. It's now 7.30 a.m. So I gotta go. Uh, but I wish you all a wonderful day and uh, see you in the next video. All right, bye for now.